everyone. I am getting over a cold, so that's why I sound like this, but we're going to power through anyways because I am so excited about this video. So anyways, I am Jasmine Theodora, and if you're new to my channel, I make content about femininity, lost female education, and traditionalism, and I've noticed that there's been quite a lot of criticism towards the femininity movement and women embracing femininity. This makes sense though because embracing femininity as a woman and engaging in feminine activities means embracing gender roles and gender roles are incredibly controversial these days. The main reason I embrace femininity and gender roles is because God has a role that he wants women to fulfill and a role that he wants men to fulfill. He made men to be masculine, to be leaders and providers, the heads of households, and he made women to be feminine, to be gentle, to be nurturers and oftentimes wives and mothers who are busy in the home. In doing so out of love, we are glorifying God as well as doing what is best for ourselves, our families, and communities. I think a pretty big reason why there's a strong community movement now is because liberalism has become so explicitly radical and just plain nuts that people are reacting to radical liberalism by running really fast in the opposite direction. Within liberalism, there's a huge emphasis on the liberation of the individual and a huge emphasis on inversion, inversion of God's design, simply because that's taking the emphasis on the will of the individual to the extreme. And fundamentally, that's going to become extremely repellent because although there is an urge to rebel within us, we have an even stronger urge to be pure and to follow God. God's way is the only way for us to know ourselves. Following God is the only way to do good as he is the source of all goodness. So people are reacting to the inverted ideology by running really fast in the opposite direction. People are reacting to the inversion of gender roles, to the abdication of femininity and masculinity by running towards gender roles and running towards femininity as women and masculinity as me men. <laughs> masculinity as men. Anyways, this lovely young woman named Amanda made a video critiquing the femininity movement and she made some compelling points along with many commenters. So I'm going to rebuke her main points explaining why women embracing femininity is actually a wonderful thing. And although I do disagree with her main points, I'm going to disagree in as respectful a way as possible. So let's begin. Oh, and please make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this if you enjoy my content. <laughs> okay, let's begin. And again, my voice. So sorry. <laughs> Point number one, why can't you just be yourself and the femininity movement kills individuality? I want to emphasize that although there are particular feminine virtues such as tenderness, gentleness, humility, and nurturement, Women express their femininity in varying ways, and femininity certainly does not look the same on every woman. I'm going to begin by saying that many feminine stereotypes do describe most women. They exist for a reason and also serve as broad cultural markers of femininity, although cultural markers of femininity are not nearly as important as biblical markers of femininity in its essence. By culturally feminine stereotypes, I mean things like having a soft voice, wearing pink, wearing jewelry, how you sit, how you walk, etc. Shallow feminine stereotypes like that. I do agree with Amanda that there are unnecessary pressures for women to fit into a stereotypically feminine box. One area I personally feel this in is in house decor. I don't really decorate my house or room much at all. I have a very simplistic approach to my home. I want my house to be clean and not messy, but I haven't really been able to beautify my living area so much. It's just not really my thing. My bedroom is like a bed, a dresser, a nightstand, my icon corner, and my closet. But when people share their gorgeous, meticulously curated bedrooms with so much thought and care, I can't help but wonder if something's wrong with me. But you really do not have to enjoy decor to be feminine, just like you don't have to wear makeup or jewelry to be feminine whatsoever. We must remember that culturally feminine stereotypes serve as rubrics and guidelines for attributes that you may want to cultivate, but not adhering to culturally feminine stereotypes does not necessarily make you any less of a feminine woman. Personally, I learn a lot from and greatly admire lots of women who possess certain elegant feminine graces, and there are elements that I seek to emulate. There are ways in which I want to push myself outside of my comfort zone to grow, but at a certain point, I have to remind myself that I can't be someone else. 
I would just be a poor copy of them and then disingenuous version of myself. Ultimately, you must remember to be who you are in Christ. If you're walking in accordance with God's word, you'll be your own kind of feminine and eventually grow into it. The essence of femininity is not a 1950s housewife. Reading the Bible, especially Proverbs, you get a very good idea of what femininity truly is in its essence. Resourcefulness, generosity, cooperativeness, humility, joyousness, wisdom, prudence, Tenderness, teachability, a compassionate, nurturing, gentle spirit. These virtues characterize the Christian woman more than skirts, a soft voice, and an immaculately decorated and tidy house. Those are wonderful things, but they are an outworking, not the essence of femininity and womanhood. We must be careful not to narrow our idea of femininity to the point that we miss out on the nuances of how God created each of us. We each have different passions, strengths, and modes of expressing our femininity. The thing is though, we must have a definitive definition of femininity to a certain extent so that we have a solid guide. If femininity can literally mean anything so long as a person prescribes a certain behavior to be subjectively feminine, femininity does not really mean anything at all. Some people even go so far as to say that being a provider and a hunter and a leader can be feminine simply if a woman engages in those things. Again, God has a feminine role that he wants us to fulfill and a masculine role he wants men to fulfill. God made us male and female in his image and thus he saw it fit that his image should be displayed in not one but two genders and that together when a man and woman are joined together in holy matrimony and become one flesh and fulfill each of their roles to the best of their ability playing off of each other's strengths and loving each other hopefully the harmony and perfection of their marriage will rival even the holiest of monks so ultimately i agree with amanda that there's a particular feminine trad subculture that has such an obsession with the trappings of the 50s and has a huge emphasis on that while being in ignorance of the real essence of femininity. They put the trappings in place of the essence and that's why they're so rigid about those trappings even though there are beautiful variations of femininity across cultures and variations between women in their feminine virtues, strengths, and expressions. This does decrease the diversity and potential beauty in the expression of femininity. In contrast, I'd say that the emphasis on the essence of femininity increases true diversity and true beauty in the women who really embrace femininity and find their strengths in femininity. Femininity, in essence, is about the virtues that God wants women to embrace, and each of us are given a varying amount of those feminine virtues and opportunities for them to be formed. Follow Christ and those virtues will manifest within yourself. Your feminine strengths will come to fruition. Growing in your godliness will positively affect how you present yourself and how you behave in the most pure and wonderful of ways. Point number two, gender roles are harmful and socially constructed. Amanda says that femininity concerns gender, which is socially constructed. That feminine traits we associate with women are not necessarily innate, but they're social and psychological distinctions created by our culture and upbringing. And they're not to be confused with sex differences that have to do with physical features. It honestly perplexes me how people think that the significant biological differences between men and women stop at the physical level or that there are not significant and relevant innate behavioral differences between men and women. That all goes back to the emphasis on the will of the individual. It's a very liberal idea that when people are born you have a blank slate and that your life from there purely results from your environment. This is a very myopic notion of human behaviorism. Everyone agrees that men and women have very consistent physical differences. Men on average have more muscle mass, they're taller, women develop breasts and curves, women on average have softer facial features, men have harsher facial features, um, men have deeper voices, women have higher voices, etc. Seldom do people get offended when you generalize masculine and feminine physicalities 
But for some reason, when you make a generalization about masculine and feminine behavior, people say that the reason why women and men behave differently is purely a result of socially constructed roles that we force upon boys and girls. Nothing these days is more offensive than basic truths that people try to keep hidden. The gender difference literature is a very solid literature and is all empirically and statistically, statistically derived. Once psychologists got the big five model of personality down, extroversion, agreeableness, openness, conscientiousness, and neuroticism, scientists utilized the big five model to study the differences between men and women. And turns out there are differences. If you sum across all of the traits, you can separate men and women with about 75% accuracy, which is not trivial whatsoever. When gender is observed cross-culturally, it tends to express itself in the world in repeatable patterns. These patterns are the roles that we naturally orient ourselves towards as men and women. So to maintain the notion that men and women are the same in aptitude, skill, and behavior is to build society on a scientific lie. The two genders are different because our brains are different. The brain, the chief administrative and emotional organ, is differently constructed in men and women. It processes information differently, which results in different perceptions, behaviors, desires, and priorities. During the 21st century especially, there has been an explosion of scientific research into what makes men and women different. Doctors, scientists, psychologists, and sociologists working apart have produced a body of findings which when taken together paints a remarkably consistent picture of sexual asymmetry. We are seeing a resurgence of young people interested in embracing traditional values and gender roles because we're looking for order amongst this chaotic rebellious modernity and when women embrace their femininity and men develop in their masculinity we find purpose internal alignment and peace. Yes there will always be outliers and exceptions. Yes, there will always be an element of nuance to have a complete conversation about this subject, yet the reality remains and the exception enforces the rule. Exceptio probat regulum. I probably butchered that. Most of us, most of the time, are going to be happier, more peaceful, and more fulfilled following the formula within our biological blueprints as men and women. Amanda and I also agree that people should possess both masculine and feminine traits. No man should purely only be masculine and no woman should purely only be feminine. Women should be able to be discerning for instance and should be very dogmatic and assertive when it comes to their boundaries and men should be able to be tender and open. Men and women do naturally overlap in behavior but just as well if you're a woman it makes sense for your core to be feminine and if you're a man it makes sense for your core to be masculine. It is time to get rid of the social lie that men and women are virtually interchangeable. We're equal in worth and value, yes, emphatically agreed, but not equal in skill, aptitude, behavior, desires, etc. Respecting the differences between men and women is crucial if we want harmony in the family and in society. Point number three, smash the patriarchy. I'm going to make a video about the patriarchy and people's misunderstanding of what patriarchy is, but basically, Within Christianity, there's of course a strong emphasis on male headship and leadership and how women should be submissive to their loving husband's leadership. Advocating for virtuous patriarchy is advocating for male excellence and the highest expression of masculinity. Virtuous masculine leadership at its finest is fair and just wise and discerning, provides order, structure, and stability, is self-sacrificing, provisional, and protective. Toxic masculine leadership is tyrannical, ignorant, harsh, unloving, absent, and self-serving. A true patriarch is a strong leader, a loving husband, a present father, and is the head of the household. He's not cruel nor manipulative, and nor does he instill fear in the hearts of those he loves. 
He only uses his strength for good ends and trusts God to dictate his values. You feel cherished and protected and safe in a virtuous patriarch's arms, never scared nor taken advantage of. Well, that is the end of my rebuttal. It's not my goal whatsoever to shame anyone or judge anyone for their choices. It's my mission to share the word of God and share the beauty of femininity with my fellow women in hopes that more will come to the light and find true joy and fulfillment in Christ. If you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe for more content like this. I promise next time my voice will not be nearly as worse. I am Jasmine Theodora and may God bless you. Bye-bye.